Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our very first look at the tier 5 Italian premium light cruiser that just was released. Duca Doista. Doista? I apologize. This is the best I got. Uh, anyway, Duca de Est Austa? I don't know. Anyway, we have Commander Luigi Sansonetti in here. We are running Norman Scott and Nikolai Kuznetsov. We are running Beyond Range, Igniter, Punch Through, and Fixated with refill station rather than fully packed. Now, uh, this is kind of a, it's a 152 millimeter gun, so you do not need subtle manipulations, okay? So don't run subtle manipulations, it's not needed. Uh, you get more AP shell damage, but the reduction in the uh, fuse time isn't going to do you any good because you're not overpinning cruisers anyway, uh, if you're aiming properly. Anyway, so you have punch through in there for uh, good measure. It gives you extra damage and increased in, uh, shell penetration so that you can do damage to the battleships as well. Uh, Kuznetsov, you might be able to swap out for somebody like, uh, what's the guy? What's the guy, guys? Crap. Can't think of his name. Uh, let's try to find him real quick. Rebel? Is that his name? No? Who's the guy with the increased penetration angles? Ah, oh, there you go. Von Essen. Uh, because the extra penetration angles might come in handy on this particular ship. I haven't tested it yet, but I have noticed that this thing has very good AP. Very good AP and getting a little bit more uh, penetration angles might be helpful for this ship. So, uh, something to consider. Anyway, let's get to the ship itself. We are running Aiming Systems Mod 1, and we are running Propulsion Mod. Uh, loadout. We have two sonars and three catapult fighters. We're running the flag, community contributors, and we are running the camo that comes with it. For stats, we have 29,700 hit points with a 7% torque reduction. We have eight 152 millimeter guns firing out to 16.2 kilometers with our build and a 7.1 second reload. You could drop that reload down. I had it down as low as uh, 6.8, I think. Uh, but honestly, the extra 0.3 seconds, not really that big a deal. Getting that extra range is nice. So 25.7 second 180 degree turn time is horrendous. So keep that in mind. The, the guns do not rotate very well. So maybe you would build it to get better turret traverse. That's on you. Uh, HE shell damage maximum 2100 with a 10% chance to set fires. AP shell damage is 3456, which seems pretty good for a, uh, you know, a 152 millimeter gun. Like that's not bad. Uh, secondaries, you got 600 millimeter guns that reach out to 4.7 kilometers, reload every six seconds, and have a 9% chance to set fires. So that's interesting. The secondaries have a 9% chance to set fires, but your main batteries, with the extra buffs, gets to 10. Like, we're 52 millimeter larger shells. That's, I, I don't understand why there's such a disparage between the secondaries and the main batteries. Like, I figured this thing would have a better fire chance, but honestly, it's not. Uh, the bread and butter of this thing is the AP, uh, but that's just my opinion. 533 millimeter uh, launchers, you have six of them, three on either side of the ship. Reloaded 71 seconds, so not bad there. Maximum damage is 13,367, so again, not bad. It's very sneaky torpedoes at one kilometer, so not quite Russian-esque, but very sneaky. And these things reach out to 12 kilometers. But the reason they're so sneaky is because they're only doing 51 knots. So you can use them for like long range area denial. Like if you know somebody spawns in a certain location, you want to put a, you know, set of torpedoes in the gap or something ahead of where they're going. Like that's one thing. But even at very, very close range, hitting battleships with torpedoes with these, a lot of times they'll just get out of the way. Like it's, it's that rough. But they do have fantastic firing angles. So uh, the Italian ships have firing angles on their torps that are pretty much the entire length of the ship. So you can launch them at very, very sneaky angles and catch people off guard. Maneuverability, 36 and a half knots, so pretty quick. Not amazingly fast, but you could make it faster if you wanted. 710 meter turning circle, 
uh, with a 6.7 second rudder shift. The rudder shift I had down into the uh, fives, I believe, but I went back up to using the 6.7 second rudder shift so that I could do better elsewhere. Concealment is where this thing is also very, very good. Uh, with our current build, you, you've got a 9.9 .9 kilometer sea detectability. Now you could drop that down. I had it down using uh, Jersey Swirsky. I had the concealment of this thing down to like nine and a half kilometers. So it's very, very sneaky, which means it can be very, very nasty when you can catch people broadside with uh, that armor piercing that I was talking about. Uh, detectability by air is 6.2, guaranteed is two, and a detectability in smoke is 4.7. So not bad. Not bad smoke firing penalty. Only problem is, you don't get smoke. So if you bring a, a buddy with you, these things would be amazing in a division. I'm not going to lie. Uh, this thing with a division would be stupid. Um, but anyway, the front end plating, 16 millimeters. So not too bad. Uh, it's not great. I'm not going to do a whole lot with it other than maybe protect you against cruisers. That's about it. Uh, we look at the Citadel. You can see from the frontmost gun to the rearmost gun at the waterline, and it is a raised citadel. If you go broadside and you get caught, there is a very good possibility that you're going back to port. So don't do it. Uh, if you do go broadside, you better make sure that they're broadside and you can delete them before they delete you. All right, overview. Hidden, good concealment means the ship can get closer to enemies before being detected, and fast above average maximum movement speed. Duca. De Asta. A light cruiser was a good ship for her time. Among her competitive advantages were high speed and generally well-balanced parameters. She entered service in 1935 and there were two of them in the series. So it's actually a ship that was built and uh, you gotta love that candy striping on the deck that is pretty unique to the Italians. Though I've already said it before, if you're under, if you don't know why that is, the Italians had issues with their uh, bombers bombing their ships friendly fire so they decided to paint paint the uh the decks of the ship this candy stripe to let the uh friendlies know not to bomb them problem is it also lets the enemies know exactly who they need to bomb but with that being said let's get to the gameplay Alrighty, so i'm going to show you a couple clips before the main shot or the main uh, fight to show you, you guys just how nasty these AP shells are, especially against cruisers, but they can do really well against battleships as well. Um, but we'll show you the battleships later on. But right now, you can see this Konigsberg, and remember, we're not running subtle manipulations. These are only 152 millimeter guns, so they are very, very consistently citadeling other cruisers, even lightly armored cruisers like Konigsberg. So we, we managed to get rid of him. Now Aoba's thinking he's all that. Now, honestly, I launched the torpedoes on him thinking he was just gonna bulldoze around the corner. Clearly the guy's running his sonar, he slows down. Uh, one of our torps hits the island, which not preferable, but happens. I was trying to launch him on a, a sneaky angle to catch him off guard, but uh, didn't quite work out the way I wanted. Now here, this could have been real bad. I'm gonna showcase uh, what happens when I thought he was gonna be broadside, and in fact, I end up broadside to him, and he's very well angled. So we don't penetrate here. But then, for whatever reason, in his mind, he says he has to get the rear guns involved, and that's a death sentence. Good night, sunshine. <laughs> Six citadels and that one salvo out of eight shells. But uh, yeah, they're very, very consistent, these ships. So I really do like this ship, but, I think it would probably be best in a division, especially a division where somebody has a smoke, because this thing does really struggle uh, with getting hit back by battleships. Cruisers, not a problem. I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any cruiser in the game in this thing, pretty much, uh, with the exception of, obviously, Tier 7s and stuff like that, just because of the DPM difference. But I'm just meaning, like, this thing is a fantastic ship, and against cruisers and destroyers, it's very nasty, uh, but battleships are its one biggest weakness and they do make it very very difficult uh in some games not just because of you know you're able to get out there and get deleted but also because on your team your battleships just seem to wait for you to do everything and uh honestly this game had so much more potential in it this game was absolutely rock star level okay but as is the case most of the time with my absolutely ridiculous games you those special games that you get where you get 150 200k games in ships that you shouldn't get that kind of number in um or 
for the other ships that you do get those kinds of numbers in often, the 300,000 damage games and so on. They're so special because so many things have to go right. You have to have a team that's against you that's dumb enough to go broadside to you the entire game. Or take a bunch of torpedoes, depending on which ship you're in. Or, and you also have to have a team on your side that is either dumb enough to not do any damage, but smart enough to stay alive long enough that everybody's not focusing you. That sort of thing. Those games are very, very uh, unique in those. They're very, very rare. Uh, but this is going to showcase what happens or what this thing can do, especially against cruisers. Like, there's very few people that are going to be able to take this. Uh, at least in the hands of, like, good players. Like, the, the Omaha that you're going to see in this one, I mean, let's be real, he, he screws the pooch in the most unreal way possible. Just showcasing once again that for whatever reason, everybody in an Omaha just has to go broadside. Uh, this Konigsberg's doing the right thing. He's angled very well against us. We're not getting a whole lot of damage. I switched to the HE to start burning him down, and that's when I noticed that there's other cruisers behind him that are heading this direction. So we're going to make a sharp turn in, and the reason I don't use the steering mod on this is you don't really need it. You don't. The steering in this thing's pretty good as is. You don't really need the extra steering. So I went with propulsion mod because when I'm in those open water gunfights with destroyers or with battleships and I'm trying to burn them down, I need that ability to slow down and speed up quickly. Uh, those are, that's, that's life saving. Especially when everybody seems to think that you're always going flat out. So the amount of times I've juked people just by slowing down is, is hilarious. But you can see we've got a Nuremberg out here, we have the Konigsberg out here, we have a uh, third cruiser out here in the form of a uh, Kuma. We also have an Omaha out here. So we're about to have an absolute doozy of a gunfight over here on this left side. Now there's a couple things that you got to think about when you're putting yourself into these positions. First of all, everybody against you has very good DPM as well. And you got to assume that they're at least as smart as you are and have the right ammo type loaded. So you don't want to just go out there and do stupid things like get yourself torped or get yourself citadel to death very quickly. Now, I slow down, I start hugging the island because I want to limit who can shoot me. And first person around the corner is the Kuma. And this is just not going to go well for you, Kuma. But then the Omaha comes around the corner. Now, Omaha has HE loaded, and I can't begin to describe my disappointment in that. I'm glad it was against me. But even the Akuma knows that he should be shooting AP at me on broadside. Well, not to the Akuma, but I am to the Omaha. But this guy going broadside to us in the Omaha is not going to end well, is it? <laughs> yeah. We get two Citadels on him right there. We need to back up. We're on fire. The Akuma has started shooting HE at us. Again, we're angled to him, so good play by him. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start shooting the AP back at him. We get another two Citadels. This is what I'm talking about. This thing is very consistently good at just deleting cruisers. And uh, we get our next two citadels and finish them off. We're already at eight citadels, guys, that quickly. We're already at 40,000 damage. And then the Omaha comes out and he's like, anything he can do, I can do better. And I was begging this guy not to shoot him. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, please let me shoot him. But no, the battleship shoots him and takes all of the damage and kills him. Real unfortunate. Especially considering I'm the one that put him in that position to begin with. But, again, that's where this battleship start to come into problems for you. Is you think that you're going to be able to do more than you are, and then it just like your team steamrolls them. And uh, so now we get to choose uh, a fight with a Congo out here. And I'm not going to lie, after getting my Omaha kill yoinked, I was like, oh, I'll try to yoink this Kong or the Konigsberg. But, uh, unfortunately, they managed to finish him off, too. Um, but, is what it is. We're going to go ahead and launch these torps early. And that's what I'm talking about, that sneaky torpedo angle. Do you see how far forward on the ship that those torps were able to be launched from? That's disgusting. If you are fighting an Italian cruiser, you better be a, aware that they have amazing torp launch capabilities. So don't put yourself in position to be eating those torps. They're very slow, but they have all the range. So don't, don't underestimate. Just assume torps are on the way and do what you gotta do to avoid them. Because they are very, very slow torpedoes. Anyway, Congo sitting here broadside to us. We're getting a, you know, two to 3,000 damage per salvo off of them. Uh, as long as we're, you can see, I'm trying to hit that bow armor. Hitting the belt, we weren't going through. But we're hitting the bow, we're getting much more consistent damage per salvo. 
He does give us some good penetrations this time. So again, this is one of those times where we're getting uh, real, real close to being deleted here. And uh, fortunately for us, he does manage to catch one of our three torpedoes that we launched at him earlier, which is a huge help. It was reduced significantly, uh, but we managed to flood him and he's going to go down. Actually, we got the close quarters expert on him. I thought we set the flood on him, but no, we got him with the secondaries of all things. So, uh, yeah, 80,000 damage, two kills, eight citadels, a couple of tidbits in there or extras in there for you guys to showcase the AP of this ship. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.